Hello again. This is exercise number one of problem sheet number four. Here we look at pseudo scalars and pseudo vectors and how irreducible representations decompose in the presence of lower symmetries. So in the description of pseudo vectors you see that it uh, is invariant under rotation and it doesn't change sign upon inversion. So you might recall that this is the property of an area. And if you even further recall that the definition of a cross product, A cross product with B, you see that this is the positive area of a rectangle and, and it is indeed a pseudo vector. A pseudo scalar we want to construct out of a pseudo vector. So we have to give back two properties. We have to make a scalar out of it and we have to give back the inversion property. Nothing could be easier. We just multiply with a scalar multiplication onto this pseudo vector and we obtain a pseudo scalar. And in fact this makes sense because this is how the volume is defined and the volume is again invariant under rotations. In part B we want to find a operator which consists of a pseudo vector. So it consists of a product, a cross product. And the first operator we can think of is the angular momentum operator. Which is defined as minus i h bar r cross nabla. So we check if this is a good choice. So we check if it is invariant under similarity transforms according to the inversion. So we check that this applied on a wave function psi yields back the angular momentum applied on a wave function psi. And you've done this in exercise number two of problem sheet number three thoroughly. I go very quickly on that here. So you have the inversion operator applied on the wave function psi and you have minus the inversion to the minus one but it doesn't do it doesn't make any difference. So you have minus r in the argument of the wave function. Then you again apply the novel operator and you do the train rule on on that so obtain you obtain a minus one and when uh applying the inversion operator on that, you obtain again a minus one because of the property of the cross product and you end up with the angular momentum operator acting on the wave function psi. So you've shown that the angular momentum operator is indeed invariant under inversions. Therefore you can conclude that It transforms indeed according to the irreducible representation d1 plus of O3. In part c you want to restrict the d1 plus representation to the symmetry operations of OH. Before we do that we want to uh, construct the character table of d1 plus. Uh, I saw that in the lecture you only did o SO3. And you might remember that O3 is nothing else than allowing rotations with determinant plus one and determinant minus one. And when looking at the character table of SO3 on page 97, you see that there is a irreducible representation D1 in SO3. When you remember how you constructed character tables, you saw that uh, there is always an identity representation and an inversion representation. And we see if this is also true for O3. So we have the elements of SO3, namely the identity and the rotations um, uh, about an angle phi. And then you have the elements of I times SO3, namely the inversion times rotations about an angle. So you have here, you have only plus one, so you have the identity element has character number has character three. You have one plus two times cosine phi. 
Here you have again a 3 because you have the same sign and again 1 plus 2 times cosine phi. And with minus d1 minus you have exactly the opposite here of minus 3 and minus 1 plus 2 times cosine phi. Now we are ready to investigate how d1 plus decomposes when restricted to OH. What do we mean by that? We restrict the angles of rotation. We restrict the angles to the rotations allowed in OH. So we restrict our angle to, for example, pi half. And then we obtain a character of 1 because we insert here a pi half. And when, when we do the same with pi, we obtain a character of minus 1. Now we look on page 99 of our lecture notes and we see that the representation gamma 1 5 prime is of dimensionality 3, doesn't change sign upon inversion and has character 1 and minus 1 for pi half and rotations of pi. So we can conclude that d1 plus restricted to uh, h yields the irreducible representation gamma 1 5 prime of OH. In part D, we want to restrict gamma 1 5 prime even further. We want to restrict it to C4V. So we want to restrict it to the operations of C4V. We have the identity, we have the rotations among a fourfold rotation, we have the rotations with pi, and we have the two times two reflection. You've done this before. This should be nothing new. So here we have 3, here we have 1, here we have minus 1, and if you look at those in the character table on page 99 you obtain minus 1 and minus 1 again. The next thing you do is you look on on the character table of C4V, you find that on page 42, and you can s you see how the gamma 1 5 prime representation decomposes but in the presence of C4V symmetry. We use the decomposition theorem to see that this is indeed delta 5 and delta 1 prime. In the last part of this video I want to give you a physical argument why this actually makes sense. You already know that you have three different three different operators which you have to distribute on the irreducible representations of C4V, namely Lx, Ly, and Lz. You also know that SO2 restricted to C4V give the delta 5 representation, so you know that Lx and Ly reside in delta 5. So all you need is to find another irreducible representation of C4V, which transforms according, a, according to a pseudo vector. And this is the delta 1 prime representation. So yes, it makes sense. Lx and Ly reside in delta 5. And Lz reside in delta 1 prime. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.